Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 62nd edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of August 16th to August 22nd in space exploration, science, and technology. August 16th, 2003, Element 110 was named Darmstadium, symbol DS, on this date. The element was first identified in the Laboratory for Heavy Ion Research in Darmstadt, Germany in 1994, where it was created for a fraction of a thousandth of a second. The element was synthesized by bombarding a lead-208 target with accelerated nuclei of nickel-62 and a heavy ion accelerator. The lab proposed the new element's name as the prerogative of the discoverers, and the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry gave its eventual approval. The IUPAC is an organization of chemists from more than 80 countries whose duties include selecting official names, symbols, and terms used in the science. Element 110 is a member of the seventh period and is placed in the group of elements that includes nickel, palladium, and platinum. All darmstadium isotopes are extremely unstable and radioactive. In general, the heavier isotopes are more stable than the lighter. The most stable isotope is Darmstadion-281, with a half-life of about 13 seconds. Theoretical modeling has predicted a shelf-stable isotope would start at 293, but scientists have been unable to synthesize it as of the date of this video. August 17, 1970. The Venera 7 Venus lander was launched on a Molnia rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome's Launch Complex 31 on this date. The launch placed the probe in a parking orbit from which it was directed towards Venus to study the Venusian atmosphere and other phenomena of the planet. Venera 7 entered the atmosphere of Venus on December 15, 1970, and the landing capsule was jettisoned. After aerodynamic braking, a parachute system was deployed, an antenna was extended, and signals were returned for 35 minutes. Another 23 minutes of very weak signals were received after the spacecraft landed on the surface. The capsule was the first man-made object to return data after landing another planet. August 18, 1869. Canadian patent number one was issued to W. Hamilton on this date for a specialized gear and piston fluid measuring device. Despite being given patent one, Hamilton's was not actually the first Canadian patent. That honor went to Scottish soldier Angus MacDonald and Vermonter Samuel Hopkins in 1791 for processes to make potash and soap from wood ash. By coincidence, Hopkins was also granted the first U.S. patent by George Washington on July 31, 1790 for the same process. The reason for the late date of the first Canadian patent was that patents were granted by the Governor General of Canada in the name of the British Crown until Upper and Lower Canada enacted patent acts in the 1820s. Thereafter, the provinces of Canada held responsibility for patents within their boundaries. This situation changed again when the Canadian Constitution was enacted in 1867, and the subsequently passed British North America Act established that patents were a federal responsibility in 1869. August 19, 1856, Gail Borden of Brooklyn, New York, was issued a U.S. patent for his process for condensed milk on this date. Condensed milk could be preserved for long periods of storage, and in this form, milk became more readily available in large cities than had been possible before. By the 20th century, the Borden Company had become one of the largest dairy product concerns in the world. Borden's success and economic bustle brought it under the baleful gaze of the Roosevelt administration in 1938, who forced the company into a consent decree. Thus began a predictable cycle of diversification and bust. Using debt, the company grew into a large conglomerate in the 1950s and 1960s that sold chemical and petroleum products in addition to foodstuffs and then unwound as profits began to constrict in the face of more agile competition. By 1995, the company had completely collapsed and fell under the ownership of predatory investment bankers who stripped the company of anything of remaining value. 
in 2021, Borden is nothing more than a trademark. August 20th, 1923. The first American-built rigid dirigible was launched in Lakehurst, New Jersey on this date. It was the first of the Zeppelin types to use helium gas, of which a supply was available in the United States. Covered with aluminum painted fabric, it was 680 feet long, weighed 36 tons, could bear 55 tons, and carry enough fuel to cruise 5,000 miles at an average speed of 65 miles an hour. It was tested in flight the following month on September 3rd. It was commanded by Commander Zachary Lansdowne, an early Navy aviator. Unfortunately, Lansdowne died tragically with 14 members of the crew when the airship was struck and destroyed in a violent thunderstorm two years later on September 3, 1925, over Caldwell, Ohio. 29 crewmen survived. August 21st, 1888, the American Arithmometer Company successfully patented William Seward Burroughs' mechanical adding machine on this date. The model P100 adding machine was only capable of adding figures, but the next model incorporated subtraction and improvements in computational ability were made over the succeeding years. Although the company only produced 50 machines in the first year of volume manufacture, it had produced hundreds of thousands of the machines by the 1930s and was a dominant brand in business machines for that period. World War II and the advent of transistors brought about a seismic shift in the business machine industry, and AAC, which had changed its name to Burroughs in 1904, soon transitioned into mainframe computers by 1953. It merged with industry rival Sperry in 1984 and changed the company's name again, but this time to Unisys. The Unisys of 2021 sells little in the way of business machines, choosing instead to focus on information systems outsourcing. We covered Burroughs adding machines in episode 31. August 22nd, 1906, the Victor Talking Machine Company of Camden, New Jersey began to manufacture the Victrola record player on this date. The hand-cranked unit with horn cabinet sold for $200. Unlike previous phonographs, which were toy-like turntables with large speaker horn to amplify the sound, this was housed in an elegant wood cabinet in several contemporary furniture styles. The speaker horn and turntable mechanism were totally concealed, and there were convenient storage compartments for records, thus transforming the phonograph into a popular household item and setting the pattern of wood cabinetry enclosures later imitated by radios and television sets well into the 1950s. Victor was acquired by the Radio Corporation of America in 1929, which produced products and recorded music using the Victor brand name. The company grew into one of the largest and most influential electronics and media companies in the world and owned NBC, one of the three national US TV networks. The company came to an end with its purchase by General Electric in 1985 who dismantled and sold off most of it in pieces, keeping only NBC for itself. In 2021, RCA Victor lives on as a music label owned by Sony. Before we get to the current event of the week, we wanted to see if you enjoyed this 60 second episode of Bladed Tech's The Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. On August 10th, 2021, Facebook announced that it had taken steps to remove an anti-vaccine influencer campaign by the Russian company AdNow. AdNow was using its influencer marketing agency phase 
to recruit influencers to spread false claims to undermine public confidence in COVID-19 vaccines in India, Latin America, and the United States. Facebook said it had removed about 70 Facebook accounts and 250 Instagram accounts for violating their policy against foreign interference. It was the second time FaZe had launched an anti-vaccine campaign on Facebook's platforms. In November of 2020, the agency attempted to paint the AstraZeneca vaccine as dangerous because it uses a harmless virus taken from chimpanzees. It isn't clear what the Kremlin would hope to gain from impeding progress against the global pandemic, given the risk to its own population. To that point, the Russian embassy in the United Kingdom said in response to queries, quote, We treat COVID-19 as a global threat and thus are not interested in undermining global efforts in the fight against it. It is likely, rather, that the two campaigns were a small part of Russia's larger ongoing cyber warfare strategy of instilling division and chaos in the populations of national rivals. Needless to say, its rivals are not amused. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.